Hemelina, the Finnish and Firenze, and uh, Hemelina came first, so Hemelina is going to so play the first yeah, yeah. quarter final match. So we see the first of group. One first one, one against the second one. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Molde is first so B, B, and and um, bad boy two C. Yeah. So we're in the corner, and I think Molde is going to try to score the first goal within the first minute. Like I always try to do. Which side did you see here? You yeah. got Gunnar in number seven, and, and immediately he scored. And within 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I expected that because that's what they they yeah. all see the same. This is what they normal try to aim for. This is standard warning. Yeah. There's even a, a certain pattern I see like that the Molde team are playing with the jerseys there. And from the Euro League, you see all the logo on it, but it's super nice to see the team. Even Gunnar, he was a uh, like, top scorer at, like, I don't know, World Championships, and even uh, yeah, during the Euro League. So he's super famous for his uh, scoring technique. This was a typical pattern seen uh, either on the open side of the goal, receiving the pass, and then immediately attacking the goalkeeper and scoring. Makes it super hard for the Czech team right now to come back with this uh, 1 0, like, uh, yeah. To, to be once you were behind from the first minute, but they're having you know ball possession and passing around. But they they shouldn't be so much on the surface. They're an easy target. They need to move the ball like that, but in the bottom of the pool. It's like they they were not really moving. They were too static. So now we have a counter attack from all the. It's also quite nice. Oh, you didn't see the player behind him, I think. Huh? It would be a super nice blind pass here and yeah. be successful, but even here. But you see the different game starts while. Yeah. Wall is super offensive, like getting the ball immediately attacking. You don't see it for other teams. Other teams are more playing in the corner, trying to yeah. capture the game. For more no, they can't attack, attack, yeah. attack, attack. They took really a little bit to play. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nice. It's really a very agile game. I like it. Okay, so the Czech team recover. What do you want to have their numbers here? And they are now trying to get counter attack. Wow, we oh, have one on one. one. Unfortunately, we cannot see the number, but this was a good one from the Czech team here. And then Boot was just swimming straight to the goalkeeper. Maybe they were even from the mole team, which was not expected here. They're usually yeah. like attack the players, they're the yeah. forwards attacking the players. They're quite in front of the goal, or quite far away from the goal. But this was an easy one, and he immediately attacked the goalkeeper. There was a good chance here to equalize, even if it was not a super super dangerous situation but um, and again I think you know the Czech don't they deserve any favors by being in the surface and trying to circle the ball because the Molde is too clever for that to recover and come in and attack here you also see here the pattern like the Molde team is so fast that the goalkeeper was not going on the goal but yeah. sitting in front of the goal and you see here the second goal of Eva Björnerum he's scoring twice now it was like stealing the empty basket. We've seen it was super fast that the Norwegian team started to attack the basket. So the goalkeeper had to set, sit in front, make a classic defense tactic. He was not going up uh, to lie on the basket. And there was a, ex the exchange player was missing. There was a gap. Even when I was sitting on the goal, received the pass, put it in. And it's the second goal in the first, let's say, three and a half minutes of this game. Oh, wow. That was great. She passed the first defense line of the Mola team. And they are now passing the ball a little bit fast, a little bit lower, uh, and right next to the basket of the Norwegian team. So they are right there underneath and they're attacking the head of the goal. He's been defended by another of uh, the forwards of Molde. And we have one one on one that's taking very hot on the close corner. And it's just still looking right now a little bit of unrest and chaos in the Molde defense for the minute there at least. I think this is a super, super nice, like, uh, like pedal or super nice strategy from the Czech team. Not to say here, or now we go to play on the defense but just to try yes. to really attack yeah. the goalkeeper because this is also something I, I think that the mode is not, not sure we used to do and we will see another the captain himself was starting the counter attack with the ears and it passed to the number it was number 24 no it's passed on the other side we could not see the goalkeeper but it was Eugen Ehrs who passed to Hermann Ulland Hansen and then finally he scored, he could unfortunately not see but uh, this was also a nice physical strong attack this is what Mold is super famous yeah. for I think they've changed a bit the game style of a lot of teams in the past years because they they in, in established oh, oh, another one. Oh, that was they look like a good person <laughs> yeah. I thought it was in a little bit loud so you not, why not? just try this but we have seen this coming from number 10. It was unfortunately not on the list. Was it number 10 or 11? 
Yeah, but uh, this is yeah, some, some of the letter which is not actualized because those are letters they sent a month ago and so that made a change as we didn't have them. And we see here like at least the Czech team they play proud, they don't play like like scary rabbits, they're trying to to I love the castles. I love the castle. They're so they the the ball is like a bullet, yeah. you know, it's really nice. This open game style, this is super different, but yeah, and this also has involved the game a lot. And number ten years scoring. Barsten Matthias, a former junior player, U21. Um he's super experienced also. His sister is also yeah, super Amanda. famous on the world rugby <laughs> player, and even the father was a former. Uh, Amanda, you're watching in the, in the audience. You can see there a lot of <laughs> a lot of experience being in his family, and this was also super technical, clear, nice goal. Four goals in the first six minutes of the match, and I think it will be might be now right, maybe a good opportunity here for the church team to try to to play on the same level, but maybe it might be also better to look a bit more on the defense oriented spot because you see here always the goalkeeper being sitting in front of the basket which is more or less a sign that they're not expecting the players coming that quick and we can see here number 33 I, attacking the you know, no and, the and those and line passes to the back yeah. I like that a lot as well it's and really very nice see number eight was it number eight, or even news, or was it someone else's score? But news was close to the basket. It might be number four, I guess, who arrives to hands it. Even Bjornarum scored the fifth score here, the brother of Ivo Bjornarum. So uh, you see, like the Bjornarum family here has almost scored here three <laughs> goals. They're making a yep. difference here why they're not just the, the only important party of the team. And see, what I really like with Mold is the mix. We have very physical, strong defenders, yep. super well experienced goalkeepers, and, and super they're ideal like, yeah. and mm -hmm. flexible attackers and forwards. Definitely. And this also this mix always when they're like getting the ball, coming in ball position, immediately all these positions are starting to yeah. just swing forward as, as fast as they can and they're just passing the ball in front, trying to catch it while, while sprinting. And not a lot of teams can really change that quickly from one of the tags you really defense and really close and then into a, such an agile and a speed um, spiel, uh, game and, and attacking and it is something that a lot of teams struggle with, changing from one defense to attack and Molde does it in a, in a way that it, it flows it's really you know, it's just fantastic I and mean, it doesn't break most of the time the other teams you see like a break there in the game in between the offense and the defense apart but the Molde is really doing in a way that is fantastic it's really nice to see Okay, so the Czech team very offensive with four players and you see they can but they're not really playing with a with a classical like defender goalkeeper positioning. The last man behind is always sitting in front. So they're playing super offensive. What also offers the, the Norwegian team here scoring opportunities as you've seen right here with this row trying to, to hit the empty goal and you see here number six. Um Jürgen Ulverstone who was getting the ball on the open side but not trying to attack. He's one of the forwards, also super experienced, we have seen I, I guess I've not seen him for a couple of times, I don't know what was the reason, but maybe something that you mentioned that some of the players, they, they yeah. missed the team for a couple of years or a certain time. So now he looks good to see when, when experienced and well-known players are coming back to the squad. And you see again, really Czech team with this very traditional classic yeah. system, sitting one person, sitting in front. It, it offers you the opportunity not sitting with two players on your own basket of yeah. more forward. Exactly. So you are, you out you can outnumber yeah. if you do it well. And if you are fast and also coming back in case you are needed then at the basket. Because if you let that two open then also can be risky. But they did it really great. They defend very well, much better than um, the first five goals. Now number seven goes the ball is going to the and he's 
so physical with his technique. Yeah. Oh, and after I push him, I can go with him with his right hand, with his open. Like, you know, this it's like a crane. It's like a crane, ball, you know? <laughs> having the ball in his one single hand, like straight away from the body, with his left hand, pushing away the goalkeeper. And then, he, so super close, straight through the face, he's like entering the ball in the basket and scoring here his, I guess, his third goal in this match. Now we have a hat trick here. Like we've seen three goals from Eva Bjorner and one from his brother, one from Oliver News, and I think one we could not really see, but we, yeah, the last one we could not really see could be 24, I'm an Ulan Hansen, oh, maybe someone else. That's a pity, I mean, the Czechs recovered the ball, but they, the, <laughs> the moment team was like a, like a wall, I was pushing them back and the, the player couldn't find another uh, to pass it, so now they're back at the basket and they're being attacked by the corner. We have one of uh, the players of Molde grabbing over the neck and waiting for the ball to come, but it was last minute rescue. Nevertheless, they lost the ball again, have two against one. Was the captain number the captain. eight. He, he was already at this at the bottom, yeah. on his way straight back to the surface, but then he got the ball and turned around with all like, the speed and make his final. Not many people can do that yeah. because once you are on your way up, you don't have really the, the angle or the strength sometimes you really do that so it's just it's a, it really looks like a crane you know you can't do anything they grab you and then you're up it was it, it was six right so because you had already six must be seven seven it should be seven yeah, actually yeah. seven i think they did go now half time time so now we have the half time but i think it was a, a score i also have half time so it was with two goals from all the years the captain Who's also, I think, he's, he's, done, he's still a professional or a more senior professional swimmer, but he's swimming a lot. He's also putting a, a big focus on this, like uh, swimming um, skills and, and swimming stamina. And a lot of, I think, even uh, what I've learned is that Molde, they're putting a super focus on their swimming stamina, on this technique, being fast, uh, swimming a lot, even during during the, the workouts, during the week. And so when we see the results that here right now with it must it should be seven zero, right? Seven zero. Maybe it was um, because we cannot hear much of the sound of the of the hole. Ah, here yeah, no, here it is. We used to have a better area, but I cannot hear. So maybe the time was up right in the, 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 the that second. So Unfortunately, there's a player in front of the. Uh, 26 could, because behind 26 we could see like the scoreboard. Ah, okay. <laughs> we can see it in just a like, uh, transmitter yeah, yeah, or something like that. But just to summarize quickly the first half, we have seen like a, a like offensive playing Czech team. They're trying to to have here also the the part of the match. They had one good opportunity with a quick like fast spread in a one-one situation with a goalkeeper. They could not not score it at least. But on the other hand, we have seen a super dominant. Uh, mold team with, yes. with a starting with a goal from Eva Bjorn after 30 seconds we made another one when we were, while we were sitting on the basket so and a third one from uh, Eva Bjorn and then later we have seen Boyvind Christian Schäfer is commenting <laughs> It's always so quiet when uh, Norwegian uh, teams play, even the Czech. And are you there, fans? Are you uh, cheering up your teams? Uh, comment what you think, what you feel, what you see, what did you miss? Just it's early nice in the morning, still probably. It's super nice here to see the first half. And remember that the, that the Czech team, they lost 7-0 against the Finnish team. And almost here we have seen seven goals in the first half. Yep. So this brings also Molde, as, I, as we discussed it before, this also brings it for me, the Molde team, to the closer, like, certain yeah. of favorites here. To yeah, win definitely. Win definitely. the title of, uh, of Champions Cup. So, Ida Bjornerum scored three times. We have seen uh, his brother, even during score, we have seen uh, Oivet Nivers with two goals, and yeah, these are also three very well-known players, um, not only from the Champions Cup, but also from other tournaments and even World Championships, so let's see how it's going on in the second half. And again, we can see a very physical playing team, oh, we have we forgot the, the, the goal from Boston, that was a yeah. good, here's Boston number four. 
So very, very nice game, very nice. I, I like also how they cover the whole three, dim three dimension, which really got how they go up and dive and then the diagonal and straight and then the parabola. I mean, they use all the forms and it's really, it makes so, so much fun to watch. Uh, the tech team is really putting up a good fight, trying to intercept the ball. But look, now it's four against two. Already has number. You see like, the, 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 the energy they're putting in there attacking. You have seen with this one Czech player is in his tech by one player, now he's by the second one. Yes, sir. Yes. Even the ball is dropping down. There is a Norwegian player. You see, with all the four forwards, they're playing immediately around around the ball. It doesn't matter where it is. And this makes it almost too easy for them to gain the ball. This is not that the first person just catching no, the ball. No, no, no. Having the ball it's really a team effort. Yeah, it's really a team, team effort. effort. And they're putting a lot of effort in this in this strategy. And then, of course, for a lot of teams, I have the feeling that they're super scared of this massive, like, like Norwegian players. And then they're making they're just being too far away from each other and with this pass a lot of players under pressure they're trying to pass around this makes it also easier for the forwards here to to catch the ball to intercept the ball and i would i would like to see more teams playing more physical more like let's say aligned more closer to each other even losing the ball getting in this scramble getting this physical fight also here you see like three players underwater here attacking and, and also taking the space around and now you see either with the interception you're winning the ball passing down and always the same after winning the ball immediately they're going straight to the basket and attack and here we can see here number 10 yes Matthias Boston but also you see, you know, the, the, the body movements of the, the Norwegian players is so precise, they move so efficient, and you see that the Czech, they're like reacting constantly, so you can see in the body language as well, there's more chaos, they, they cannot really establish a way where they feel comfortable, they're just running behind the ball, that's how it feels. At least the hard thing for the Czech team is yeah, always when they're winning the ball, it's not that they're not gaining the ball, or like they're getting in ball position, but always as you see, here they're trying to pass the ball there's someone a very fast yes. Norwegian player as we've seen it right now who's in the right now here you see a swimmer two players immediately going to attack yeah. now he's trying to make a pass and you will see that the Norwegian players following the pass here immediately attack it's like a wall it's like a trust, against the wall trust the player before he receives and getting the ball fully under control this makes it super hard for them and sometimes I would like to see teams here playing like double passes just staying a bit longer on the water after passing because this has also given you the room and the space like a bit cheap to swim just pass with the ball back and maybe try to trick them a bit it makes it easier yeah because what they're doing is also passes you can see them in front because there's just one player and now we see another Nihus Oyvind almost effortless it looks like effort yeah, it looks so easy. <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> yes, effort there's a lot of work and actually this time they're staying underwater this is this is incredible you need to try to sprint and stay that long underwater as they do even on your way back to the surface you're getting the ball and you need to do it and what i need to go back i need to go down 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 attack and we have seen with the eight zero from the captain all the new ones on the empty net this was a resulted like uh, like a it's a, a result of this massive port checking, the massive attack in the midfield, what they are what they're, uh, bringing up in the water from the Norwegian team and obviously it's free throw. Four. Yeah, the ball was outside yeah. the, the play area, so now it's going to be um, four Molde. And let's see, I mean, the, the Czech team have done a really fantastic uh, job defending and but again, it's as you said before, they, they, they are always in kind of left alone and the Norwegians are much faster to block the, the one in possession of the ball. Uh, and then they, they don't have any fire. So every player, every Czech player has to play so hard and keeping the ball that then after a few passes, they're completely uh, tired. So we received some feedback that the commentary is super hard to understand. Uh, we're trying to work on that. On the other side, we see here still the match from the Budweis team, Vujovic against uh, the Moldy team, so the uh, Czech team in white against the Norwegian club team from Moldy in blue. And it's 8-0 uh, in favor for Moldy here in the blue shirts. But now we can maybe we can see here next next attack frequency from the Czech team and you'll see the big difference like the Czech team they're playing around in the corner maybe they're trying now here to make like how do you say result 
working, they're trying to keep the 8-0, they don't want to lose with double double digits or double numbers. And again here, you see a, a classic defending goalkeeper because it's too fast. The fast breaks are too fast. So now you could see here another goal. It was number four, Evan Björnerim, even Björnerim, the brother of Eber Björnerim. And number four scored here the 9-0. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in the second half. Both teams still having their timeout. No team has taken a timeout break. Yeah. Sorry. But, and this might be a good opportunity right now. Mold is doing this. I was, sorry, but I, I left you alone for a bit there because yep. I was, um, now I understood it was uh, wrong with our volume. So Jakob explained me about the game volume and our regulator. I think it's better. So thanks so much. I hope that the sound now is better. better yeah. So we have it was too loud, and so that was it kind of like an echo. And now it, that I, I didn't know that gain volume in that I'm a technician here. So now that I understood, I and I know the button, so I I think it's better. So sorry. Still, we're seeing uh, here Norway uh, the Molde team from Norway against the uh, Czech team from Budjevic from Budweis. And it is 9-0 in favor of Molde. Yep. And we have seen uh, almost like the scores made like three goals from Eva Björnerum. Uh, in the meanwhile, two goals from Evan Björnerum, one goal from Matthias Barsten, and another two or three goals from uh, Oivind News. So, super, like, super effective, super su successive uh, and successful goaling attack here. Attack pattern from the Norwegian team. But now we see here the Czech team, maybe with their second good. This is what I what I usually expect. Like the Norwegian team, they're giving them the space. They yeah. Then like starting or attack. Yeah. Through the Defend, goal. And, and then coming down with like all four players gaining the ball, and then they're starting the to the Yes. And a lot of teams are doing always the same mistake. And yes, then, uh, this is something that the Norwegians do a lot, the girls do it as well. They wait, they let you come in, and they then they, the yeah. they let you come, yeah. and they're going to attack you there. Uh, it's a bit like... Better and making the strong passes around the basket, staying at the bottom, super close to the basket, and making the strong, strict, straight passes. This is like something also, I, I, I love to compare this game style with, uh, with handball. It makes super close. Super physical, but you keep the ball open in your hand and you're trying to push it in each direction. Here it was not successful. We've seen here now a foul. Obviously. A penalty for Molde. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, I didn't here. see. It looked like yeah, the, the shoulder ball may on the on the basket. So this means we have a one-one situation. 45 seconds for the attacker to score while the defender needs to stay underwater or getting in ball possession and bringing the ball to the surface. Yes, but also what is important to know is the, ba the, the goalkeeper cannot go too far away from the basket. He needs yep. to be able to reach the ball. Okay. And well. we have seen here the score from Guillermo yeah. who made here the 10-0 and almost, let's say, almost three minutes left in the second half of the game. Yes. The Czech team, they lost already 7-0 against the Finnish team. Now we are having a 10-0 against the, the Molde team. At least, let's say, they're doing a good job here. But for, for me, it, 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 they could have avoided to lose that high. Because they're still trying to score. And they're putting a lot of effort yes. in their offense, the, the Czech team. You see it. I think it's important. If you are too much in the defense yeah. against Molde, you don't have any chances. You need to play the ball a little bit in the middle field and yeah. see if you can attack or something else. Super often you see the gaps in the defending of the Czech teams while they're putting a lot of effort in their attacks and in their forward checking. They're missing the chance to have a super proper defense, but also if you would have a super proper defense, it makes it hard to defend here. At least, and it's amazing yeah. to see how the you know regions might seem to change on one on the other side of the bus. There's always one position there, one kind of the other, and and they're just waiting for the ball. Uh, but now the Czech team is really doing a good job trying to keep it away. Now, okay, too late. They're coming with three against two, and uh, they're being pulled up by one of the forwards and the foot checking and the surface fighting for the ball and um, I think it's one against one a little bit is like a uh, scramble there 
they can't see anymore outside the, the air probably they have to be careful because now the ball is going to fall down there was no one there and in no way uh, very good in recovering the ball and then attacking and it's dangerous because you have all of the players defending and they are not back on, on time but uh, this is also super typical when you see this player on the half of the yeah. of the pool size. So he's staying almost in the middle, let's say two minutes under the surface, two meters under the surface, and he's like this half. So it, it, it gives the opportunity to go quickly back to the surface or going to the yeah. bottom or attacking the goal. This is also a pattern Norwegian, usually the Norwegian national team is, is, is well known for that, but as we know, uh, there are a lot of players from Molde also playing for the national squad. Yeah, Flippe so does a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Flippe does that also a little bit, to be like, you know, two meters down and in the corner. Uh, that was a very nice game by the end of the, in the, in the um, uh, basket of the Czech team, and they defend well, they block the ball away, and now we are we again in the basket and the attack. Ulvestrand? Well, great save what by the goalie, the goalie is... Oh, but it was super well defended here by the goalkeeper, but there's a second wave here coming up. And, oh, and he also scrapped, caught the ball, you know, and even number eight missed to score here on the new season. This is like... He's very chaotic right now. And now it's Eva Bjorn. Yeah, I know. Was, the game it was, is over. No, 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 no. It was... The, I saw, the, the, the end of the time was yeah. before yeah. the... The game was over before yeah. he scored, but... Ten was zero. super massive pressure on the Jeff basket, and they defended it, so this was a... Super great, like defense effort, defense uh, performance. The Czech team there from Budweiser could show here in the last minute, and the final result now is 10 0. So 10 0 in favor for Molde. We have seen uh, three <laughs> goals from Eve, Björner, and his brother. It is funny. Do you remember? Uh, oh, well, if you are not mm -hmm. commenting in the. Um, in the World Cup, also the blue teams were mostly winning yeah. <laughs> the World Cup. Yeah, the World Championship, they yeah. like almost the blue team. They're winning a lot of matches in the at the Co beginning. Coming up, we have now uh, Hemelina, the Finnish team, is going, which is uh, first of the, the group C, going to be playing against Ege uh, in white, uh, which is the second of the group D. So that's just, that's the game that is going to we start at the one. Egger team, they lost their first match in the tournament quite high yeah. against. Oh, sorry. I think Molde wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Zero against Molde, but we need to remember that they had like there were some players missing at their first match because they arrived okay. late. The the okay. What is is well, the full squad is here and ready to play and. We have also seen like Ege playing against the Jewish team. They are also well experienced in their defense with 13 series. Yeah. But it's also massive. You remember we're playing two times 10 minutes? Just time running through to score this so many yeah. times. It's yeah. super good. Yeah, it's true, yeah. it's Turkish team on the white yeah. so Ah, right, let's, exactly, let's mm -hmm. uh, call the names. Uh, let's see, the, the, what do you say? Call the last for second. Uh, Hemelina and... Turkish. Oh, sorry. Okay, and here, yes, again, university. I can say the uh, Turkish names, and you can go for the Finnish <laughs> one. I had that. That's fun yesterday. So, number one, Özer Semit. Two, Onur Seylan. Four, Ozan Özdemir. Five, Khan Vakir Şoğlu. Six, Uğur Seylan. Seven, Kerem Demir. Eight, Ned Karakot. 9. Umit Filiz 10. Hakan Toga, I think that's the captain of all. Mm -hmm. uh, 13. Asrak Fati 12. Ekin Kok 15. Kaya Susan 17. Levent Eskonul 27. Ikan Gokai 99. Verkan Mert Osuru Kovli Alright, then we go. We continue with the Finnish team. And we're starting with number four, Jussi Matula, number six, Janne Bukkeluste, number seven, Rico Rutkenen, number eight, Mark Oenberg, number nine, Jari Uvikorpi, number ten, Rami Jurikkenen, number twelve, Jenny Zalonen, number thirteen, Nanti Zalonen, number fourteen, Hatki Luko, number twenty-three, Viktor Krulov, number thirty-three, Alexei Rias Nyokov, number 60, Yuri Boyko, number 66, Guy Björk, number 79, Akko Luko, and 95, Anti Roher Terra. And 
What I recognize here is that we see here some Russian players from Moscow. And yeah. We see a Victor Krumo. This is, I think, this is the, uh, some of them are from Beta in the EuroLeague. I, I mean, know, I think I some. Know, yeah, from Moscow, so. from the Beta squad, or initially from the Beta team. We see Victor Krulov here, and also Yuri Boyko is a well known player from Russia. Um, there are two guys I played myself and when I was a junior player, so I know this guy from the U21 squad Russia. Um, we played against in, let's say, 2006 in Sweden, 2007 in Finland. So super nice guys. And even there, during this time, we need to remember that 2007 was the first time when the Russian junior team played with jerseys. Yes, it was a yeah, I remember. I remember. 2007 to this championship. Everyone was like, what the fuck is this? Two years with the number, it was like, oh, cool. And, and, look, cool. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and, and the funny thing is, right now, I, I am so used to see the t shirt that when I see a team like the Czech without playing without t shirt, it looks weird. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it, and and it's, it's used to it, yeah. especially after the World Championship, yeah. and you see all teams playing with that. And it's a bit of pity that like uh -huh. one experienced team, for example, if you see your team, the players by March, who has also choices, is not playing and using them. Because they're also like used to play with it in the yeah. meanwhile. Usually they just use it in the German league. Huh? Yeah. I mean, that I think is... Yeah, but maybe in the German league it's something different because we don't have the live stream here, but it makes it super easy yes, to use. Yes, yes, yes. Especially I talked yesterday with the female ladies, sometimes you have even the wrong numbers in the fins because you played on the board. Yeah, so that was... It, yeah. Be playing the national team like number eight and here on the tournament yeah, yeah. Number that was confusing. <laughs> it's super confusing yeah. Yeah. especially you have nothing else you can like put on but now let's come back to the game we see Aggie University uh, white right. we have some of the Finnish uh, yeah. fans already sure. there <laughs> Elena are you there <laughs> so we see now here yeah, the at least if the Finns they won like uh, two years ago yeah Rick remember yeah Rick Alina was there and I remember the